Last week, I released a video on what if we had 1939 borders in the modern world. Today, I will expand upon that video, exploring instead the borders of 1942, at the height of Axis expansion. As the two obvious, eye-catching changes from the last video, Japan is now in control over most of Asia, while Germany controls most of Europe. Let's see how our figures have been impacted. Let's start with a major loser, the Soviet Union. Their GDP from our 1939 figure declined by 35%. This makes sense, considering the loss of most Western territories. Still, I somewhat expected a larger drop-off in GDP, but on second inspection, it makes a lot of sense. In terms of territory lost, most of it is located in the relatively poor Ukraine and Belarus, while Russia's economic hubs like Moscow, St. Petersburg, Tatarstan, and the energy-rich regions across the Urals are all still fine. Interestingly though, despite this USSR still holding Central Asia and the Caucasus over modern Russia, modern Russia is actually richer than this USSR, showing just how poor these post-Soviet states have gotten. In terms of population, the blow is slightly less heavy, but still, 80 million people now fall under German occupation. This reveals a fascinating new reality. Central Asia now dominates the population of the USSR, with the Eastern Slavs now accounting for 42% of the population. But in contrast to the fallen giant, the British Empire remained pretty consistent. Despite losing control over several territories in Asia, the British population actually increased by 120 million over their 1939 figure. How? Well, mostly because Britain has seized Italy's East Africa colony, which holds the massively populated Ethiopia. But where for most states, 120 million is a big boost, for Britain, it translates only to a 4% increase. In terms of economy though, through the loss of rich areas like Hong Kong and Singapore, GDP still drops by about 7%. But let's see how Italy losing East Africa affected them. As the Italian Empire refocused on the Mediterranean, their population plummets by over 60%. But while this may sound devastating to Italy, their GDP actually managed to rise slightly. How is this possible? Well, the relatively poor East Africa was exchanged for the much more prosperous territories across the Mediterranean. For illustration, take Greece and Ethiopia. Ethiopia has 12 times the Greek population, yet Greece's economy is twice the size of Ethiopia's. Then, a quick mention to the Belgians and the Dutch, both of which have lost their homeland to the Germans. The Belgians have fled to the Congo, their major African colony. Their population drop-off is relatively minor, but their economy falls off a cliff, showing just how poor Congo is. But the Dutch have it much, much worse. Not only have they lost their homeland, they also lost their major colony of Indonesia. They are still on the map though. Do you see them? That's right, there they are in Suriname. The Dutch GDP dropped by 99.72% and their population didn't do much better, falling by 99.75%. Moving on, let's discuss France. Since Vichy France was way larger at this moment, we will take them as the true France. They too have been decimated, with a couple of colonies spitting off the free France, the Japanese seizing Indochina, but most importantly, their European territories being carved up by Germany and Italy. Their population drops by about 45% as 250 million people are torn away from the empire. But through the loss of Vietnam and other areas of France, GDP drops by a whopping two-thirds. But interestingly, despite losing so much of northern France, the French mainland still drives more than half of the economic output of the empire. And who benefits from this French loss? That's right, Germany. Out of all the changes, Germany has the biggest proportional growth. Going from just controlling Central Europe to most of Europe, their population explodes, growing by over 200%. Their economic growth is slightly less radical, but it still doubles to 11.7 trillion. The reason for this disappointing growth is that most of their Eastern European conquests are relatively poor, and Germany themselves was already extremely wealthy. Internally, the empire is pretty evenly divided, between Eastern Slavs and Germanic populations, with significant Western Slavic and Frankish populations too. Economically, the Germans do assert their dominance though. Eastern Slavs only make up around 8% of the GDP, with even the Western Slavs having a higher share. But they both seem small compared to the 55% of economic output still controlled by the Germans. This makes sense, considering the amount of developed Germanic economies now united under the German banner. 
A less fascinating development comes from the United States, as their only real change is losing the Philippines, meaning that essentially we just reverted to the United States as it is in real life. And with that, it's already time for the final nation, Japan. All other changes either aren't interesting or have already been discussed in a previous video. But the Japanese have catapulted in power, adding rich territories like Singapore and Hong Kong to the empire, as well as adding the major population centers of Indonesia and Vietnam. Their population grew by an insane 700 million, reaching 1550 today. Their economy also grew, though by significantly less, upping themselves to nearly 25 trillion. Internally, the Han still dominate the nation, with 47% of the population and a whopping 60% of the economy. The Japanese make up less than 10% of their empire, but they do still have an outsized 22% of the economy. The second largest population group, the Indonesians, make up around 20% of the empire, but only 8% of the economy. All in all, this Japanese empire is now a very strange and complicated matter, but there is one very impressive thing that this Japan has accomplished that no other nation has in this series. But before we get to that, most of you aren't subscribed. To keep up to date with the two videos I release every single week, consider doing so. Thank you. But what Japan has managed to accomplish, in terms of economy, is overtake the US, becoming the largest economy on earth. This is incredibly impressive, as even Britain, controlling 35% of the world's population, doesn't even come close. We can also see how much of the world economy has been consolidated in a couple of key states, as Germany represents not just the final economy above 10 trillion, it's also the final economy above 4 trillion, with China just barely staying below it. But the numbers just keep dropping off fast, as Italy is already the final nation above 2 million. Rounding out the top 10 is an array of quite disappointing nations with unimpressive economies. If we put the top 10 lists next to each other, not much has changed in terms of the rankings, but if we compare the GDP figures from the 1939 borders to 1942, it's very clear that some major consolidation has taken place. In terms of population, the changes are more pronounced. Right off the bat, the British doubled the previous number one, eclipsing 3 billion, followed by second place Japan, who only has half the British population. China, despite their occupation, still achieves a very respectable third place. Germany, which hasn't made the top 10 population list before in this series, takes fourth place, beating out the Americans. The French have lost a lot of people, but still make sixth place. Rounding out the list, Brazil just barely beats out the Soviets, with Mexico and, surprisingly, Belgium taking the final places. This list is quite different to 1939, with France moving down and the Dutch and Italians disappearing. But to conclude the video, there is one more very important thing to discuss. How do the Axis and the Allies compare now? In terms of GDP, the Axis have 44% of the world, while the Allies are very, very close at 47%. This is a very impressive showing from the Axis, considering the difference in population. The Allies have 58% of the world's population, with the Axis at only 31%. It's also interesting to note that the Axis are still dominated to an extreme degree by Japan, who control 58% of Axis GDP and 64% of Axis population. If we separate the war into four factions instead, adding the Comintern and Japan, the Allies suddenly decline to 45%, with the lost percentage being the Soviet Union, but the European Axis declines to a mere 17, while Japan holds 26% of the world's economy. In terms of population, the Allies lose 3% to the Communists, while the Axis drops to 11% and the Japanese holds 20. But that's it for this shorter video. I like this series, so let me know if you'd like me to do this with some other years, though I somewhat struggle to think of what years would be interesting to do. For now though, I'll end the video here. Thank you all for watching, consider leaving a like and a comment to support the content, and subscribe for two more videos every single week. To continue watching, click on one of the two videos on screen now. Again, thank you all for watching and goodbye.